This conference will now be recorded. A uh, very good afternoon, all. Welcome to the um, uh, forum of Meet the Export and Let Us Discuss Biodiversity. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce all of you uh, today's expert, Sri S. S. Misra, sir. Sir, welcome you to the forum, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce you to this forum because uh, it's a proud moment for me because I learned ABC of fish taxonomy from this person who is having more than uh, 30 years, 35 years of experience in fish taxonomy, particularly marine fish. When uh, the taxonomy of marine fish comes uh, to our mind um, and any problems comes uh, to the taxonomy of fishes, one uh, name suddenly strikes, yes, we have to contact SS Mishra, sir. So, sir, uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce you to this forum. Uh, about SS Mishra, sir, I would like to tell that uh, he joined Geological Survey of India in the year 1990. And from uh, then onwards till now, he is working in various positions of Geological Survey of India, uh, starting from Chennai, Barampur, uh, Gopalpur Center, and uh, Headquarter uh, Geological Survey of India. Now he is the officer in charge of marine fish section at headquarters of Geological Survey of India, Calcutta. By that capacity, he is the custodian of all the type specimens of Geological Survey of India, particularly marine fishes. And uh, starting from the days of uh, Asiatic society till now, most of these specimens are uh, with his custody. And before joining JDSI also, he has seven years of teaching experience. After that, he has published more than 100 national and international publications. He is, uh, has described uh, 10 vertebrate species in feces particularly. And he is a member of IUCN Snapper Seabrim Ground Specialist Group. Uh, so it will be an honor to listen to you today, sir. And uh, as all of you know, this forum is going on and we are trying to um, uh, bring out all the best experts available with Geological Survey of India and outside for the uh, students and uh, faculty members of uh, uh, various parts of India. So I hope it will be a, uh, an excellent learning session about the uh, thesis. Uh, today he is going to talk on the topic Amazing World of Thesis Diversity Distribution in India. So I'm now handing over the forum to Sri S.S. Misra, sir. Sir, welcome to the forum. And now the forum is all yours. I welcome all the participants on behalf of Geological Survey of India. Have a nice one, one and a half, year, half hours. Please, sir, go ahead. Forum is all yours. OK, thank you. Good afternoon to all the participants. Really, it's a great pleasure, Dr. Anil, to work with you all those days particularly uh, from the day you joined in JSI. Uh, rather, I can say my work is enhanced with uh, your ability. Uh, rather, I was uh, studying all those days, and I, I think I still I am studying what pieces are. It is a very interesting group. Uh, and. Uh, <clears throat> We have a long, long, good time to share. And uh, let me talk something about this uh, amazing world of pieces, diversity and distribution of India. So everybody seen pieces, the beautiful pieces in their aquariums in peace markets of course all those peace we have seen are sorted in peace markets in lending centers but the most amazing thing is the underwater paradise under sea the coral reef regions if uh, one can see the pieces in water in the life condition, how they are moving, one really remains spellbound. I think I was not experienced those things. Still, I went to Lakadeeps and started snorkeling there. Of course, 
the water is uh, clean enough, light is penetrating clearly down. Just simply float on the water surface and you can see these colorful pieces moving below you. And you will enjoy. I think if, once you go and see those things, you will, will not think of going to those mobile gardens to see the flowers. This is the, the real beauty underwater. I think uh, most of us uh, might have uh, remembered these two characters. That is, the, you can see the pictures on the screen. Two characters in the film Finding Nemo. And the she uh, pictures and the scenes for, uh, associated with that particular picture gives us uh, a really a good idea the underwater picture and the uh, pieces in the coral deep region. But anyway, these amazing pieces, first we need to know about the pieces, what they are, because I have been told many of the students are there in this forum. They would like to know more about pieces and piece taxonomy as a basics. So most of my uh, talk is uh, centered in describe in informing those students what piece taxonomy is and what studies we need to do. Pieces, as we know, you can see this is the region where the pieces evolved. We can find pieces everywhere. Wherever there is water, we can find pieces. But these pieces uh, originated almost 350 million years ago in the Ordovian period of the Paleozoic era. And but most pieces, the present day pieces, usually. Uh, evolved around 400 to 350 million years ago in the Devonian period. So these pieces can find, you, you can see the pieces even in the heights of uh, uh, more heights even the 500 kilometers above the sea level and 11, 11 kilometers, five kilometers above the sea level and 11 kilometers below the sea. They can find in the, the below the Antarctic seats where the temperature is uh, minus two degrees Celsius. And even uh, the, these are, uh, Antarctic pieces, some of these Antarctic pieces, glimpses I am giving only. And uh, where the, in the hydrothermal vents, you can see the piece like eel pouts. And uh, in the hot springs of Lake Magali, Kenya, you can see even the Shurati tilapia, the extreme hot waters where the, the temperature may increase to 40 degrees Celsius. The size of pieces, the biggest piece is uh, almost 20 meters long. That is a school bus, you can say. You can put students above it and take them. This is the largest piece, largest in size. And the smallest one is uh, less than 8 mm length, the adult size is less than 8 mm length. You can see it is placed on a fingertip. When we are talking about the diversity, pieces are really diverse in shape, size, and color. And as they also live in different places, of course, freshwater is also different. I am 
not uh, talking fresh water more only with some few informations i will pass through the fresh water probably dr koshijin singh is going to talk about uh, fresh water pieces still you can find pieces in torrential waters you can find pieces in caps you can find pieces in rivers ponds even in polluted waters in those are the primary pieces i was talking about they spend the entire life in fresh water while some we call them as a secondary fresh water pieces they are normally the coastal fishes but can survive and enter into the fresh water and spend some, some time of life maybe also returning to the coastal water again and marine pieces they spend the entire life in the marine water some we can talk about the deep sea pieces those are found beyond 200 meters deep but still we usually talk about either primary freshwater pieces or marine and estuarine pieces those we can categorize as sharks sharks is the gill slit region on lateral side of the head and anal fin region scares and rays that is gill slit present on ventral side of the head and anal fin option batoid feces those uh, early pieces will be uh, discussed by dr binis most probably so i am not uh, discussing about them more and these are the some other bony feces can go i can't go back Ah uh, yes, so the other bony pieces, those are eel-like pieces with elongated body, and there are needle pieces or half beaks, and these flying pieces. Flying pieces, they are having definitely you can see the long pectoral fin, but they never fly. They came above the sea water, and with a thrust by the pectoral fin and uh, strong caudal fin they go above the seawater when they are feeling that they are in danger or facing any predators or like that so they simply glide above the waters water up to 50 to 80 meters very well sometimes 100 meters even and plot pieces most of these are bottom dwelling pieces. They are of various coloration, shape, and size. Syngnathids, syngnatha, that is a mouth part, is a joint, lower jaw and upper jaw joint, it is not separated. And it forms usually a tube like structure. There are some pieces what we call poisonous, either their spine contains poisonous poison or their skin. Some pieces are very colorful and attractive. Normally, those are known as uh, ornamental pieces. But the most important is the food pieces. And I think uh, most prized piece is Elisha. And several other food pieces like Vecti, Topsi, and this uh, Mogilids, Cyanids, Pomfrets, Carangids, they are the most uh, common food pieces. Then I would like to talk about uh, how many pieces are there. See, pieces are usually more than half of the total number of recognized vertebrate species. Vertebrate species are around some 65,000 now. It was a wrong number, actually, 60,000 I have written. And uh, the valid species in the world are 
ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ it is uh, much higher and among these uh, total number of pieces known marine pieces are about just 50% and brackish water pieces are less than 200 that you can obviously count down the uh, water pieces are almost 50% the total number of species in india recorded till that is 300 6698 and freshwater diversity is uh, 955 species that constitute nearly 26% and marine and estuarine species are 2726 in number that is about 74% among these 2726 species there are 202 cartilaginous species that includes your sharks scales and rays that is metoid pieces and all other things and 2524 are the bony pieces known from the coastal waters of india this is the entire coast i was showing including the ocean floor the entire area uh, i think this is from from gujarat maharashtra karnataka kerala this tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha west bengal then this andaman nicobar island this side and lakshadweep this side this the total area what we are having now for at our in front of us to study the peace diversity the peace diversity in in india the study of peace diversity in india we can date back uh, 1758 when carlos linnaeus published his uh, system on nature uh, wherein he described uh, nearly 75 species from india although it was written in india many of them are from indian ocean not all 75 species are actually available in india indian coast probably this is the first species one one among the first species described from india polynemus paradisius then <clears throat> from indian waters particularly particular study from indian waters began with the work of uh, Francis Hamilton formerly known as Buchanan with his uh, monumental book on an account of fishes found in the river Ganges and its branches he described 266 species then another work on the marine fishes particularly was by Patrick Rochelle there is a description of and figures of 200 pieces collected from the vijayakapatnam on the coast of karamandal but uh, all the 200 species uh, are not uh, binomial binomial in nature the nomenclature used is not in use at present but based on his figures many more pieces was redescribed later on with a, a different name then the contributions of uh, john mark leland 
when he described the ecodal fishes of Bengal, he described many eels from the coastal waters of Bengal. Then the Bible of Indian ethology, Indian fish taxonomy, I can say, is the fishes of India, published by Sir Francis G in the year 1975. <laughs> was published in four parts and yes, in sir, just, just one minute sir somebody had um, please all mute your mic it's disturbing uh, recording and other things please sir uh, go sir, ahead sir francis key just uh, get the account of his pieces in four parts from like 1875 76 77 and 78 Later, one supplement is also published in 1888. And those, all those things later on also described in two volumes of Fishers of British India, which included 1,418 species under 342 genera. But you see, from this period to today, we have at least, uh, I think, a threefold increase almost in our diversity. Our further, further scientists uh, contributed to increase of the number of biodiversity here. Uh, another good work that from those old days whereby Dr. Uh, Dr. Alfred William Alka by his uh, Indian deep sea fishes in Indian Museum and uh, illustration of the geology, uh, where he has uh, participated in the initial uh, visual investigator, RIMS investigator, and collected those species and described them. So 166 species were described by him, plus added few more species to, which is included in this uh, uh, Indian Deep Sea Pieces book. The major contributors for, of, for the Indian fauna are Bleak, Bleaker, Valencians, Jordan, Gunther, Fowler, Bloch, and Snyder. I think uh, somehow I missed out Uvia's name here. Uh, while writing, it might have deleted somehow. Cuvier's name should be there. Cuvier and Valencians, Bloch and Snyder, Gunther, Polar, Blicker. Uh, here is uh, the pieces described from India by the workers who worked in India itself is given here. There's a Hamilton who described the most species, 266 species. Alcock 163, Waikam Vishwanath, Dr. Waikam Vishwanath from Northeast India is described nearly 100 species by that by now. Dr. Menon, A.G.K. Menon described 48 species, B.L. Choudhury 43, Dr. Koshijin Singh 25 species, Lamutil 24 species, Dr. P.K. Talwar 21 species. Here's the list. Uh, th those who have published 10 or more species, but still be below 10, there are many other names. But here you can see those are in blue color Alka, Talwar, Dr. KK Vinis, Dr. Mahapatra, and myself. Those are contributed most in uh, marine pieces, and other contributors are working in freshwater fishes. Here is a picture of uh, the history of marine studies in India. We have launched a RIMS investigator in 1841, 18, sorry, 1881. Uh, then RIMS investigator two in 1908, and that worked uh, 10 more years. Uh, then this uh, Mabahis, 
which uh, worked in John Moore expedition. There are, sorry, the British Challenger expedition done in 1872 to 76, German expedition, Valdiva, Dutch expedition, Shivoga, that is Shivoga expedition, HMS investigator, John Moore expedition, Dana expedition, Galatia expedition, Albatros expedition. These are all international expeditions which uh, collected uh, species from in seas around India and contributed to the biodiversity studies from India. The institutions started from the Asiatic Society of Bengal, Marine Survey of India, Geological Survey of India, Marine Survey of India joined JDSI, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Marine Survey Unit started in JDSI, Calcutta in 1955. Then it turned, turned to as Marine Survey Division and the stations like Marine Biology Regional Station Chennai, Andaman and Nicobar Regional Station Port Blair, Ashland Biology Regional Station Gopalpur, and Marine Aquarium and Research Center Diga. The all are uh, working on the marine fishes and contributing to the knowledge. Oh, sorry. When I come to the number of species known from different uh, states of India, you can note down Andaman having just uh, 1,912 kilometers of coastline and have more than 1,600 pieces reported from Andamans. West Bengal with 158 kilometers coastline, 577 pieces reported. From Orisha, 642 species. Andhra, 793 species. Mm -hmm. Tamil Nadu, 1178 species. Puducherry, just 314 species, Kerala, 745 species. Probably it will be more uh, we need uh, to work out. Karnataka, 562 species, Goa, only 144, 24 species, Maharashtra, 646, Gujarat, 447, and Lakhadip, 831 species has been recorded. You can see the Annaman. Why Annaman? This is the thing actually I wanted to discuss, but uh, I failed to put it in slides. Annaman is a place, it is a conjuncture area. Geographically, one can see it is a point where Indian Ocean, Western Pacific, both the things are joining there. The, Sunda Island hotspot, Malayan Ridge, Indo Malayan Ridge, and, and uh, Myanmar Ridge, everything joins at that point. So, ecologically, it is, uh, it is also closer to the center of evolution for coastal pieces, what we say in the uh, Philippine uh, Malaya uh, region that was known as a center of uh, evolution for coastal pieces. It is closer to that region. So pieces from Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, are mostly found in that area. So that is why the number of uh, species is uh, more. It is uh, really higher than any other islands in the world. And the same same way, way, here two things we can see, the Lakhadip also. Lakhadip, uh, it is uh, the eight degree channel divides Lakhadip in two parts. Uh, below eight degree channel is your Minika Island. Minika Island has much similarity with the Maldip, Maldip Island species. Then, the coastal species of India. Since these are the 
coral reef areas, they harbor much more, number of species are more there in that area. And here in Tamil Nadu, we have this Gulf of Manar and Park B region that contributes uh, more towards the diversity of the fishes. Uh, I think uh, this slide shows uh, the new species uh, described during last 10 years, but to see the marine list, it is uh, very less. Of course, in one year from Andamans only, those are 80 new records were reported uh, in 2010. Later on also new records in marine. Whatever the new records in marine that is coming up, but very less freshwater new records we can get. But new species particularly I was talking about, very less number of new species has been described from India particularly. It requires more study, particularly when we are studying a less studied group, it will give more exposure and we can able to describe more species that Dr. Anil can tell in a very vivid manner. When we started studying the eels, that was the group which was not tossed in India by any worker more, more, more or less. And we could have described uh, several species, more than 10 species we described, I think. Yes, about 10 species we described uh, from India as a new to science and uh, several new records also. But what exactly we require, here we don't have much more, many more exports in the field. We need to develop manpower. Some workers, of course, available for freshwater fish study, but marine numbers are just, we can count them in fingertips. The problem like the, what the taxonomy study and diversity study? Some people, they try to identify pieces from the photographs, but many times it goes wrong. It is uh, not proper also because for taxonomic study, what exactly we require, I'm just uh, uh, touching those things uh, afterwards. And molecular study. Actually, when we are doing molecular study nowadays, many people, they want to go in a reverse way. They get the molecular uh, data, they try to compare with uh, BOLD system or NCBI. It is really a reverse system. And what is the problem actually? Uh, I will discuss uh, in a later slide. For study of the pieces, what exactly, what are the things, what are the major characters is responsible that uh, I would like to inform for, for the particularly those the students, those are interested to come to the field of uh, taxonomic study of uh, pieces. For them, it is essential, mostly. The body shape, whether it is long, cylindrical, or eel like. So these are the mostly the eels Morenidae, Anguillidae, Congridae, Morenosociidae, or Moringuidae, like that. If the body is strongly elongated, but not ill-like, that may be Bellonidae, Hemirampidae, Chirocentridae, Fistularidae, Gympilidae, Scumbaresociidae, Trichuridae, it all, one, you can just sort, sort them into these small, small groups so that you can simply uh, come to the closure in the identity. If bloody body flattened, eyes on both sides, that is mostly the common passiviformis species, patch like pieces. Body flattened, eyes on one side, that is all pleuronectiformis, pleuronectids, or solidae, botidae, cyanoglossidae, pleuronectidae, cytodidae, 
they are having flattened body with eyes on one side. Shape of the head. If it is rigid like, it may be sinodontide. If it is strongly flattened, maybe that is a pallidae. Membrosidae also there. Body, when a head very spiny, that is scorpionidae, holocentridae, uh, bericidae, triglidae, they are having spiny heads. Then see the snout tip. If it is pointed, big, this gifide, istiophoridae, bellonidae, hemirampidae, like that. A tube like snout means your fistulary day or some other synlatics. If snout, uh, mouth, mouth is protractile, if you will just pull one jaw, it will come out to certain extent. This is a jerry day, leognati day, and the jay day. Pores present on chin, just look. Downside, if the pores present, it may be cyanide or hemolide. If the teeth is fang like, maybe carocentride, gympilide, or trichuride. Body, so the teeth are fused into plates. That happens in only tetrodontide and uh, scaride. Teeth with molar-like structures, rounded, rounded teeth. Those are, they may be lethrinidae, spiridae, or pentapodidae. But the barbels present like this, this. So that may be mulide, gardide, in marine pieces, and eridae, this is an arid picture. Uh, if it is present on chin only, it is mulide gadide, but it is present around the mouth. That is the maxillary and mandibulary, both uh, barbels are there. They are eride, protocidide, protocidide, and gadide. If the fillets are present behind the dorsal and anal fin, this may be carangide, scombride, gympilide, Istiophoridae, like that. See, look for the dorsal fin. It is short, far back on body. Here is the dorsal fin. You can see the dorsal fin. It is far back, beyond the half of the body. So it may be bellonidae, chirocentridae, fistularidae, like that. Tetradontida also. Long fins. It is continuous, just behind the head or above the head, it starts and continues. It is uh, coryphenidae, ophidae, gympilidae, trichuridae. And if the fin is a joint to caudal fin, that may be cyanoglossidae, protocidae, or macroridae. Two short dorsal fins well separated from each other. It is mostly the pouch like feces, pouches, what we usually kept them under uh, pesciformis. And uh, with filamentous or elongated fin, the fin is elongated sometimes. Either the dorsal fin or the caudal fin. So in that case, it is megalopidae, some are karangidae, lupidae, leognathidae, nemipteridae, pentapodidae, priacanthidae, sparidae, jidae, that is the characters. Ari small adipose fin, this is the adipose fin. Here is the adipose fin. If the adipose fin present, it may be eridae, cyanodontidae, Mictophidae and Salmonidae. When pectoral fins absent are very small, that is Cyanoglossidae, Soleidae, Morenidae, 
three upper pectoral fin, upper race of pectoral fin, Sengraulidae and Nemipteridae. This pectoral fin, yes. And some three rays, lower rays are three in Polynemidae and Triglidae. Pelvic fins absent. If it is absent, it is Trichuridae, Stomatidae, Gifidae, like that. Uh, if the pelvic fin present before the dorsal fin, uh, sorry, before the pectoral fin base, then it is Priacantidae, Gardidae, Macrodidae. These are the points we need to work. We need to study actually and when the two spines present on the pelvic fin, that is clearly Shiganide, it's a single family. Anal fin, long joint with coral fin. That is Trichuridae, Engraulidae, Macroridae, Protocidae, Sanoglossidae. Two spines in the anal fin. There are certain two spines, three spines, four spines, based on the number of spines also, we can distinguish the family. Caudal fin, type of caudal fin. When it is tapering, it may be Engraulidae, Trichuridae, Macroridae. When it is filamentous, it may be Nemipteridae. Only the middle fin is filamentous extended in Synodontidae and Fistularidae. Lateral line scales reaching hind margin of the caudal fin in case of Synodontidae, Polynemidae, even Cyanidae. When keels are present and caudal peduncle, it may be Aganthridae. Low keels on caudal peduncle, Scombridae. This is actually sharp spine. Keels present in Scombridae, Istiopolidae, Gifidae, but spine present in Acanthuridae. Belly, sometimes uh, shaw like structures, the scoots are present. That is in case of Acropidae, Engraulidae, and even Jidae. Light organs, you can see these uh, white spots on the screen. And these white spots are uh, light organs. If the light organ present, it may be Engraulidae, Mictophidae, or some, sometimes Allopiforms is also having light organs. After that, the other major character we need to study is the gill rachis on the first gill arch. This is the upper arm and this is the lower arm. So how many gill rachis present we need to count? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. However, the count must be accurate. So whoever starts working, they need to count it three, three four times to come to a conclusion what exactly the number. The, you can see the scales particularly. There is a, this is a, the lateral line scales, lateral transverse scales comes above lateral line, below lateral line, and these are all other measurements for a piece and different organs I was showing. With the scales, either it is a lateral line scale or body scale that is important. Lateral scale, line scale always different from the body scale. And if one study the scales alone, then give a much better idea on the difference, uh, in, interspecies difference of the scales. Uh, some, sometime back, somebody came to me to show some scales what he obtained from the gut content of water. Unfortunately, I, I am not working on the freshwater pieces. The water uh, took some pieces in freshwater 
and scales are patient in the gut content. If somebody tries the scale, cell scale structure of that particular quarter body, then only they can say the what was the scales present in the gut content of the water, which species that water is preferring to take. So in that, that way, one can study the scales also to give some more knowledge and other, I mean, in the food preference of the other organisms if they are piscivorous. The structure of autolites, structure of gas bladder also plays a greater role in taxonomy of fishes. X-rays, even the hypural, epural structure, number of vertebra, particularly in eels. When we are studying the eels, it is highly essential to understand, and it is mostly constant in a particular species. The variation may be hardly five to 10 in number, even the total vertebra. The total vertebra, uh, this is a pre dorsal vertebra, pre anal vertebra, and total vertebra count will give much better knowledge to understand what species the eel, given eel is. So, this is the different x ray that we can use to identify certain species. And the more advanced tool we are using is a molecular study. This is more useful to understand the cryptic species or when the molecular data of the congeners are, congeners are available that will be give much better information. Uh, there's a, so of course, I have already shown these uh, measurements earlier. And the last thing, after noting down all these characters, we have to go for this uh, for a dichotomous dichotomous key. Mostly, many keys are available, but the best key I suppose is dichotomous key. Uh, this is uh, just a template I can show for a particular family, Terapontidae, where we have only four species. That's why this dichotomous key, dichotomous key can be presented. You can see very well the dichotomous key always have contrast characters. See this particular couplet, lateral line with 46 to 56 scales, six to eight scale rows above lateral line. If that is the case, it is therapon therapes. If the lateral line with 70 scales or more scales or 10 to 17 scale rows above lateral line, then it is other species. So when is all this uh, dichotomous key is uh, prepared with this uh, uh, contrasting characters so that identification is much e easier. <clears throat> Here I am pointing out some works where when we are uh, getting confused and uh, why actually proper identification required. See, this is Dr. Marathi and Ball. They have uh, described a brief comparative account of axial skeleton of six polynomial species from Bombay waters. They included a species named Polynemus heptadactylus. But interestingly, this polynemus heptadactylus is not available in India. The species is either Philemanus similis. If it is heptadactylus, close to heptadactylus, it must be Philemanus similis. Or what I feel their study is based on polydactylus mulani specimens. But when the they use the name Polynemus heptadactylus. All will get confused whether 
what characters they actually the skeletal characters is given for heptadactylus heptadactylus not available they are possibly studied polydactylus mulani but heptadactylus closure to filimanos similis known from our coast so it is a, one will get kind of puzzled to understand what the work done the biological work is done with some other name There is similarity undoubtedly, but here you can see the bands and the bands here, number of bands are different. Here is in pairs mostly, whereas here only five bands are there. But however, this is the species only available in Indian coast, and this has been reported as Platonicus gateridus. Here is a very peculiar thing. In all the earlier documents, we are finding secutor ruponius. Whereas the species originally described is this the original figure of this ruponius. It looks like, when you see the mouth, it looks like a, a Leognathus species only. And I prefer to name it as a Leognathus ruponius. And what? We describe as a sorry, uh, secutor ruconius is in fact patiently known, deveximentum interruptum, because ruconius is a leugnathus species. But our specimen's mouth, whatever we reported as ruconius earlier, was having the mouth, what we call secutor, and now it turned out to be deveximentum. So if it is a secutor, it is the vesimentum interruptum. If it is ruconius, it is leognathus ruconius. However, the re reports based on the second species, not the first one. Here, all our literature, earlier literature, it was showing trachinocephalos myops, known from India. But recent studies found Trachinocephalus myopes is restricted to Atlantic Ocean. The species in Indian Ocean is Trachinocephalus trachinus. So with the further studies we are making, we have to update our knowledge and work accordingly. Similarly, this is another case, Oxudesus dentatus, is known from the Japan and China region. And the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean species is Oxidesus nexipilis, not Oxidesus dentatus. Here I have uh, uh, failed to give another slide. Uh, the recent work of uh, Dr. Uh, K.K. Binis. We all know the pump rate in our in post as uh, pampas arsenchius. However, I would like to point out that pampas arsenchius is not occurring along Indian coasts. In Indian Ocean, not only Indian coast, in Indian Ocean, pampas arsenchius is not occurring. It is a Western Pacific species. The species occurs in our area is Pampas candidos. Dr. Binis and his co-authors, they work out the molecular, molecule, molecular study of the pump, pump rates of Indian coats. And they concluded that it is only Pampas candidos that is available along Indian coasts. People 
are very much uh, interested to go for molecular studies. I would like to point out here, what is the drawback of this reverse process? Getting the molecular data, comparing with the NCBI data, available, available data in bold or NCBI, then identifying the species. This is more much easier that they don't need to any other work, only the PCR thing, then sequencing, get the sequence, do it. Yes, once I tried to find out the molecular sequences available in bold system for Mugil cephalus. I found there are five data matches with Mughal, with the name Mughal Sapalas are there. So sorry, there are seven data, five from one place and two from one place. However, this data is differing strongly the genetic distance of those seven species are so different when by seeing the uh, tree one can easily say that that is of two different species then i got confused which one is the correct uh, sequence of uh, mughal sapalas then I went for sequences available from Indian Ocean, from different countries of Indian Ocean. When I brought it and computed the, all the data, I found that two species uh, reported as uh, Mughal Sapalas from Indian, Indian waters is matching with the other Mughal Sapalas, while the five sequences there available in NCBA from India are definitely sequence of some other species. I didn't uh, try to work out what are those species, but I am just confirmed that there is wrong identifications. With the wrong identifications, data has been submitted to NCBA with the wrong name. So at least we should not do those things as a taxonomist. Uh, we need an integrated approach on the taxonomy. And uh, to study the taxonomy, we need to train our eyes first while making the collections. There is a position, different uh, structures, but even the position of the fin, the slight variation in color may turn out to be a different species. So careful observation and while working, the accuracy in counts and measurements are more essential to study the taxonomy. And here also, I could not give uh, some information that is the geography is the most important thing. The Atlantic species is very much unlikely to occur in Indian Ocean. Sometimes when people are going to compare photographs, they are comparing and finding out it is more matching to uh, Atlantic species. They are reporting it with that name. A species of Japanese water can never occur here. That is what happened actually earlier. We used to say Eupenius japonicus was uh, uh, Eupenius, uh, sorry, Gatatus, that is in our Indian water. The Bensachi, Eupenius Bensachi was in uh, Japanese water. So earlier, People used to say in Eupenius bensasi is available in Indian water. However, bensasi is restricted to Japanese waters. Our specimen 
should be happiness that at us so it, it requires a little more conscience thinking whether we are able to report it if it is a much wide, widely distributed species it can be available but uh, if the limits ge geographical limits of the species is restricted outside our area it is one must be very careful enough to identify the species at present our conscience are depletions of the fish cage in inshore waters abundance of many commercial important fish species are declining populations of many fishes are really decreasing declining shark fishes once uh, it was more common in our area is now not at all visible and uh, there is an increase of commercial demand and we are going for target and non-target fisheries highly susceptible to the variety of inshore demersal fisheries including trolls and gillnets they are the main threats actually high level of stress pressure on ecosystem overfishing so see with the condition there are more crafts then our coast can thrive so the increase of the crafts need to be reduced or further it is better not to give permission for more crafts the overfishing depends the crisis i think it is uh, much more time i have to speed up there is a bike has discussed this is the figure for east coast of india so some years ago maybe but, uh, one decade ago these are the figures now nobody brings the bike catches they are killing the pieces and throwing in the sea itself this is a really a concern thing. There are illegal catches along the within the five kilometer range. Trolling is going on, and the shores in coast where the very small pieces are being caught, juveniles. The piece that goes uh, about uh, more than fifty centimeter in length. I can see you can see there are several numbers of the same piece on my palm so how they can be shared it is only awareness by increasing the interest if the fisherman and the community is interested most of the pieces can be sent there are regulations, laws, but it is very difficult to impose those laws. Of course, there are some creation of marine protected areas that helps in recovering fish populations to some extent. Uh, I think these are not required. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Hello. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your in very informative and um, basic to the modern approach of fish taxonomy. Uh, we are really grateful to have a um, talk for one hour from your side. Now I will discuss the. Um, I will leave this forum to the discussion part. I will request all the participants, whoever is having a question, starting from students to the faculty, please unmute your mic and ask question directly. It's uh, the forum has been designed so that the students and uh, um, uh, other members who are participating can directly take a part. 
so please take part don't type your questions and i will take all your questions it's better you should interact please go ahead <laughs> you have enough time uh, hello sir ah uh, hello sir uh, yeah, sir please i am krishnakant bakshi from gujarat bhavnagar sir uh, yes. very nice presentation sir uh, sir my question is uh, <clears throat> in last 10 to 15 years because of the climate change or a present situation like corona virus any effect in diversity and distribution of species of india sir uh, actually in marine species climate change uh, does not work more uh, because species uh, the really they are uh, i can they actually react to the temperature undoubtedly but uh, climate change effect more in the freshwater species than marine species but uh, i'm not sure because uh, there is much not much difference in the biological assemblance of these uh, different species of species in coastal waters only thing sometimes we might have not seen those species but if uh, deeper work concentrated work is being done then we can find out the, the, the more diversity but there is not much change in the assemblage okay okay sir thank you thank you very much sir anybody else yes sir yes sir so can i use hindi for asking question yes yes sir so uh, me i am from dahanu district okay so dahanu so, me palgar hindi me boli आई एम पालघर डिस्ट्रिक्ट से बिलोंग करता हूँ और कोस्टल रीजन में ही हूँ तो यहाँ पे कैसा बोईसर एम आई डी सी तारापुर एम आई डी सी का ऑल द वेस्ट आर डिस्पोज इन टू द सी एरिया कोस्टल एरिया एंड मेरे को उसके अंदर फिशेस के ऊपर हुआ इफेक्ट नंबर्स में तो डिक्रीज आ रहा है डिक्रीमेंट आ रहा है उसके अंदर तो उसके अंदर जेनेटिकल कुछ म्यूटेशन क्या म्यूटेशन वगैरह हो सकता है या नहीं कोई पूछ रहे हैं तो हेलो आई थिंक ही गॉट डिस्कनेक्टेड या आई आई एम हेलो प्लीज गो एड प्लीज गो एड रिपीट रिपीट करो ना नहीं क्वेश्चन तो पता चल गया तो यहाँ पे कैसा न्यूक्लियर प्लांट किसी है जिसका पूरा डिस्पोजल जो है वो पूरा का पूरा सी के अंदर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है बोलो आपका क्वेश्चन नहीं सुन पा रहा वो मेरा क्वेश्चन ये था कि हाँ हेलो आवाज आ रहा है बोले 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 हाँ अब तो फिशेस के अंदर ये म्यूटेशन के चांसेस फिशेस के अंदर म्यूटेशन क्या क्या चांसेस है और उसको सर्वे करने के लिए मैं कैसे प्रोसीड कर सकता हूँ उसमें चांस ऑफ म्यूटेशन ऑनडाउटली पर्टिकुलरली वेन रेडियो एक्टिव एलिमेंट आर प्रेजेंट बट इट विल नॉट be carried out to the next generation because uh, okay. in general moment uh, mutants are not uh, surviving mm. if they are surviving complex it organism is mm. in natural order usually mutants are does not survive it will not uh, okay. taken to the next generation stage i i will i add to add something to this when you are talking about nuclear pollution it adds some mm. chemical uh, to the place but see so was that that gets diluted immediately so though it has a impact but it has it may have not a long very long term impact that that, that that's the case okay 
but if it, there are smaller okay. organizations definitely it will impact um, particularly if it is, there is nematodes or some smaller organisms, it will have okay. immediate impact. Okay. So, uh, and so many uh, coastal region pe matlab ye goa coastal region pe maine microbial diversity ka study kiya tha mera msc ka project hua tha and usme drastic change hua tha ye pollution ke wajah se to aise hi mere ko fishery ke matlab aquatic animals ke upar bhi same observation mil sakta hai ya fir usme bhi mutation ke chances chances aa sakte hain to isliye maine wo pucha tha definitely smaller organisms pe impact rahega jaise aap bole micro organisms ke upar definitely rahega आप नेमाटोड या पॉलिकिट ये सब के ऊपर स्टडी करेंगे तो आपको हो सकता है बहुत कुछ मिले जो आप एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हो मगर लार्जर बॉडी ब्रेस्ट पे इसका इम्पैक्ट आते हैं जनरेशन लगता है जनरेशन के लिए और फिशेस आर नॉर्मली माइग्रेटरी एंड दे कैन इजीली शिफ्ट इफ देर इज पॉलिटेडी if there will be a long term impact the only they, there will be a mutation yeah okay thank you sir any any more question please go ahead Yes, Dr. Abdul. Uh, nice presentation, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I have one doubt that the sunlight is the most factor for the marine fishes as well as the storing fishes. No voice clarity. Yeah, I say the sunlight is the most factor that contain that is that uh, determine the distribution of the. uh the fishes in the ocean as well as the estuary and beyond it is it sir but see is a recent studies indicating that there are some variations in the salinity dr anil could you get it the uh, breaking ah i could not get it clearly And uh, Raksha, we can't hear you properly. Please type your question. It's not audible. I will take the question on behalf of you. Please type in the chat box. any other questions please go ahead hello sir yeah please go ahead sir good afternoon sir hello sir Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, yes. Sir. This is Balamohan from Tamil Nadu, sir. Yeah, yeah. My specific question is: uh, We have two coastlines, uh, east coast as well as uh, west coast, and which coast is most uh, uh, diverse sir, in terms of its diversity? Yes, yes. Let let SS uh, Mr. Sir. Sir, can you hear him? Sir, can you hear him?
probably just just hold on a minute probably ss mr sir cannot hear you i hope so माइक I'm not sure how come you muted. So just refresh it, refresh it. Okay, okay. I'm. I'm the region, region, region. Just hold on a minute, doctor. There is some technical issue with this computer. Sir, can you hear us now? Sir, can you hear us? Now mute, hoy ni. Yes, yes, sir. You are now on live. It's fine. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes. You are audible. Uh, yes, yes. It is now audible. Audible for me also. Let me let me hear the question once again, please. Bal Murugan asking that um, East Coast and West Coast, which coast is more diverse regarding species and diversity point of view? Ah, uh, in that point of view, as uh, I discuss discussing. Tamil Nadu coast contribute to more than 1,100 species. Automatically, it is the diverse coast because uh, and uh, Karnataka is uh, more or less 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 studied actually. And so West coast is less diverse than East coast. There is a thing. Hello. Yes, yes, and sir. Then, yes. Sir, one second. This is Balam Rajan, sir. Yes. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, what could be the reason, sir? Because East Coast is more diverse than uh, West Coast. What could be the reason, sir? No, oh, is the particularly the type of environment we are having. The coastal bodies. Uh, You see, we have mangroves. We have more deeper estuaries. We have brackish water bodies like Kolikat Lake and Chilka Lake. Then the coral deep region in Gulf of Manar and Park B. So when a diverse environment is available, so diversified fish species is also available. when the monotonous environment is there uh, along the west coast so a particular group of species uh, accustomed to that monotonous uh, environment only are available not the diverse species group is available so assemblance is uh, 
differing from environment to environment. When there is a number of different environments are there, so different species assemblages are there. So number of species are more in East Coast than West Coast. Okay, sir. Thank you. Allah, sir. Is this satis satis satisfied for you? Yeah, Dr. Abdul, you can go ahead. Okay, sir. Good evening, sir. Right. So, yes. just I want to know, just I want to know, any studies conducted on marine fauna, the impact of impact of uh, ocean warming on marine fauna, or the same impact on both contract ties or ostic ties? No. <clears throat> As I was discussing earlier, the climate change and uh, therm thermal change particularly will not impact on the marine pieces, contract ties and uh, uh, osteichthys. So no, nobody has done any such uh, study. Usually it won't impact pieces. It, it, it impact uh, lower animals, I mean small um, invertebrates, but not pieces. Pieces are changing their places very frequently. So with the change of the temperature, they can change their place also. So it, it don't impact uh, the pieces. As the marine fauna is concerned, the salinity is the most important factor. Is there yes. any changes in the salinity factor, the trend of salinity variation in oceans? No, in ocean, that is not, no, no variation almost. It all depends upon the geographic zone. So in the Red Sea, the salinity is more, undoubtedly. Whereas uh, if you come to this uh, northern Bay of Bengal, the salinity is less. The pieces, they move, they, they don't uh, search for this sort of things. Yes, when they travel from sea to coastal water, salinity plays a greater role but uh, not in the sea yes okay, some of you. the some of the pieces of high saline area like red sea you cannot get it in uh, northern bay of bengal they won't cross that region like that system it happens southern atlantic species they never cross uh, the Kay river mouth to come to indian ocean these are due to the differential climatic conditions, environmental conditions. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. It won't affect much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Abdul. Any more questions? Please go ahead. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm Karpa Swami from uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. Sir, can you explain about uh, the status of uh, fish diversity in Wedge Bank in South, South India? Status of Wedge Bank? Wedge Bank. Mm -hmm. Current status or uh, diversity of uh, Karakoshami, you have worked on Wet's Bank. Is not it? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You only worked on Wet's Bank. Is not it? Yes, sir. That's yes. why I'm asking if any study is going, uh, if anybody is doing anything like that, I'm asking. Your PhD thesis on Wet's Bank? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. What, what exactly you want to know? Now I mean uh, uh, that I'm not working. I worked in 2015, sir. So I'm asking now. So, sir. Yes, you submitted your PhD thesis in 2016. Yes, sir. Hmm. What exactly you want to know? So now any other projects or anything uh, is doing? No, uh, anybody uh, anybody doing uh, research on that uh, wedge bank or? Uh, uh, no, uh, no, no, no. At present, I don't have any knowledge of. Uh, any project on West Bank? 
if somebody from Tamil Nadu is working, that has to be pressed out. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, sir. Sir, Namaskar. I am Dr. Devasis Mahapatra. Nice presentation. Yes. Nice presentation of you. And uh, I just want to uh, uh, know uh, about the parrot fish, uh, particularly in relation to Odisha coast. What is the diversity of a parrot fish? Uh, because uh, uh, we know that it is uh, generally associated with reef areas. So uh, just I want to know the diversity of parrot fish along Odisha coast or along east coast of India. Oh. Among the parrot fishes, uh, Skyrus woburn is very common all, all along the coast of India. Skyrus woburn is not restricted to any specifically cocoa reef region. And uh, Skyrus rochelle is also found in deeper waters, not close to the coast. And few parrot fishes they are found all along the coast. But many of, many of the parrot fishes are uh, reef dwellers. Uh, I think one of my book booklet on uh, parrot fishes of India, you can find the distribution in detail. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any other questions, please go ahead. Uh, hello, good evening, sir. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, yes sir, good evening, sir. It, yes, sir, your presentation is a very good and informative for the young tanks and I missed. And my doubt is about uh, what is the status of shrimp gobies in Indian water and what are the studies in gobies along an Indian coast? Very few, very few studies have been done on shrimp gobies. So, uh, whatever the study done, it is mainly from Andaman. Okay, sir. Very recently, we have reported one swim gobi from Chennai also. Ah, yes, sir. Mayar Shina. Ah, ah, yes. But uh, anyway, that, that was a ch chance collection. <laughs> oh. We have not planned, it was not a planned collection, it was a chance collection. So if somebody goes for a planned collection, that will be, that will be a good one. Oh, so yes, sir. To uh, if it's a gap area, you can work on that because uh, we have also reported one from Odisha and West Bengal coast that Myasena filipper now, Cryptocentrus filipper. So I can mm -hmm. say it's a gap area. These and, are two uh, species, Marsana Philippair and Marsana Yangi. And two species uh, are recently. So there, I, there is a lot of chance that you can describe many new species in this particular area. So is some dedicated works are needed. In mainland coast, it is only five species, shrimp gobies are reported. Okay, sir. So, uh, if possible, is the diving at all, we can uh, able to means uh, collect more number of species in that uh, reef areas, no, sir? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Diving and only diving is not possible if somebody has to be accompanied with uh, catching the pieces. Okay, okay, sir. While photographing, the piece has to be captured. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Then only okay, it will sir. be confirmed. You can take live photographs as well as you have okay. to Captured uh, actually, to add to his question, uh, we have received many photographs from different areas, particularly Lakadip and Andaman. Possibly they are new species, but unless we have the specimen, we can't describe it as a new species. And I and Mr. Sir will agree, we both won't go with the photographs to even go as a closer species, which is earlier reported. So we need to yes. verify at least you should collect one specimen so that it work can be easier in that particular field. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. Can I yes. audible? Yes, I'm, uh, yes, you are I'm audible. Done. 
yeah thank you sir uh, this is such a nice uh, interaction interactive uh, topic as well as interesting uh, i myself dr anjita sethi from uh, department of geology prannath autonomous college khoda uh, actually i want to know uh, to train my undergraduate students how to identify the ornamental fish and is there any course is available so that they can enroll themselves for think, their future prospectives thank you thank you i think jdsi is going to organize one training program this is a virtual training program very soon okay okay you can keep on watching uh -huh. our attachments in our portal acha acha so, it will be a virtual program so many students can be accommodated okay Over. okay then um, what what will be the um, um, exact time schedule or schedule for this program no it is not finalized uh, by next month i think it will be uh, notified oh, oh. Okay, one sir. thing sir we can add to madam question namaskar madam i will like okay, to add something to sir question that uh, when you probably you want some session for the undergraduate students yeah yeah sir it's better they can't go with us as they are undergraduate students we can have a special session for madam if you like you just write to director sir i will uh, talk to him and we will arrange a special session for that uh, for yes, your so doctor dr anil That's is it. very close to you he can come down and to your college okay i can also go from calcutta okay or else if virtual training also now we can help you out you just write to us i will arrange a special oh, session for you uh, this uh, this virtual training uh, will be very beneficial because students are now staying at the home and mm. uh, they can utilize this period uh, of corona time so that they can learn something during this uh, um, period i suppose yeah yeah we can organize one session maybe no, no, two no, hours no. or three hours basic session for them no problem ah. Is that oh, right to direct okay. geological survey of India? I'll convince sir, and we'll organize a special session for you, madam. Uh, oh, okay, thank you, sir. I will be in uh, touch with you then. Yeah, yeah, madam. my pleasure. Okay. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, this is Satish from CIFE, Central Institute of Fisheries Education, Mumbai. Okay. So my doubt, my doubt is, uh, can we describe a new species based on a single specimen? Is a case or some other thing? It is a crustacean species. Crustacea with single specimen not possible. Okay. Is Crustacea it possible is for, for the fish? It, is it possible? Hmm? Is it possible for the fish? Uh, in some cases, it is possible. Mm -hmm. But in Crustacea, actually, you require both male and female. Mm -hmm. So, in many cases, gonopore is most important. So, with single specimen, it may be a aberration. In pieces, we, it is very rarely we, we describe uh, with single specimen, but still we have described. But uh, in Crustacea, I don't feel. If it is a rare species and uh, we cannot get it uh, regularly, then can we possible to? We have to try to get it and. Uh, only thing is that we have to go for molecular study to establish it as a new species. Okay, sir. thank you. Sir. Okay. Anybody is having some questions? Please go ahead. I think uh, nobody is there. We can close it now. <laughs> yeah, I hope we have taken almost all questions. Uh, and somebody, Sridhar Bhave, is asking: Microplastic is a big concern nowadays for marine organisms. Uh -huh. If you went 
study degree of accumulation of microplastics in marine seas which particular fishes and uh, which specific area of ocean we may focus for initial yeah. study it is a good area of study there is no question of uh, which area actually which fish all the fish because no not much work has been done in indian ocean itself so best, anybody better, can take up better, better better to go with four pieces first because impact will be yes, more visible yes, yes. I hope we have taken almost all questions, sir. I will mm. uh, now we are on to a ending uh, session. So, uh, okay. so I would like to thank you, uh, sir, for your very informative uh, starting from the basic to the high end of your presentation. No, no. Thank you I very just, much. I, I just stick <laughs> to the basics only. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We have many students who are um, uh, particularly postgraduate students. I hope some of them are working on fishes and some of them are from Fisheries Institute. I hope their lecture will be very much beneficial for them and uh, even if for me also. And mm -hmm. I would like to thank you for this. I would like to thank Director Geological Survey of India for its uh, kind permission and to organize this and reach so many people at a glance. I would like to thank all the participants and my team uh, wholeheartedly for this. So thank you all. Thank you all very much. And uh, our next session will be on a mammal. Soon we'll share the links and everything. Uh, till then, uh, take care. Be safe. Goodbye. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.